It started in Ellen Whitlinger's backyard about a year and a half ago. There were seven women who got together and um, decided, actually it was two women who, who got together at one point and decided that there wasn't a sufficient playground in Swapscott and um, called on five other women to come and help and decide what needed to be done about it. I went to a really nice playground in New York and I got a flyer about it was a prefab playground and I went to my mother's group and said let's do it and people said yeah let's do it and they went to another mother's group and then we all had coffee at someone's house and we got started so it's my baby. At the same time we met there was an article in the uh, one of the weekly papers um, about Robert Leathers and we said well let's just give it a try and that's what happened. We called him, um, got all the information, decided to go forward with it and um, we got build date, and here we are, building. The design day involves concerned people in the community plus the kids in the community. And so they work through the, so a lot of times we work through a school system. Uh, we come into town and they've, they've set it up that we're gonna interview all the kids in the school system, particularly this one. Um, we normally go into uh, two classrooms at a time. In this case, we were seeing 200 kids at a time. And what we do is we sit down and say, okay, kids, here's your opportunity to have anything in the world that you want on your playground. What would it be? And we sit and we, sit and we start to brainstorm. They come up with ideas, and then we say, okay, we got a ship here. we got a maze over here. we got a little stage. How do we want to connect these things? And so we come up with ideas on how we'll connect these things. He actually did use the ideas of the kids. We were skeptical. We really thought when he told us prior to his coming here that he was going to take the ideas of the children, incorporate it into the playground. We figured, oh sure, he's going to just, he's planning to, you know, he must have some kind of, um, you know, prefab playground and he'll tell the kids that. But that's really not what happened. He really used the ideas of the children. Everybody came and they showed a little um, picture, a picture of the park, like what they, what they like imagined it would be like. And then, and then, then, then they, they would might, vote. They then would, everybody would vote, and they would pick the winners, and there would be the kids' committee, and they would take everything from their picture, one thing from their picture, and put it in. Now, before we've gone to the school and talked to the kids, we've gone out to the site and measured the site to, to see what we can see what we have to work with, and that's what we did. We got a lot of ideas, so we got a big playground. <laughs> We need approximately 1,500 people to complete this project, and that's over a span of five days. We're counting on everyone from the community to just give a little bit of their time, and we think that if everybody donates just three or four hours, then that will be, it will be a reality, not only a possibility. We started fundraising in November when we had um, a pancake breakfast and a magic show, which was very successful, and subsequent to that, we, had, we planned an event for each month. When we came to the construction weekend, we had netted $48,000. Um, we are now up to about $53,000, um, which we need. Our expenses have been higher than we anticipated. The architect's fees have been higher than we anticipated. So we're in a good position right now, and we're hoping we'll have a little bit left over for some maintenance funds. As publicity chairperson, Diane and I are sharing that position. She is the artist, and I'm the writer. Uh, she's been doing all this, the signs, posters, um, bulletins, and I've been doing all the writing, the newspaper articles, contacting the media, and that kind of thing. Um, at the beginning, there was such a small group that we just kind of all did everything, and as it's gotten bigger and bigger, our jobs have gotten a little more specialized. builds on itself. We start relatively slow on Wednesday because we have to get the framework and the superstructure out of the ground. And, and, it, and it, so what it is, it's like a, a upside down pyramid. Five people work all day. They generate five, each person generates five more jobs for five more people. So you have five people the first hour, the next hour you have 25 people and it just keeps mushrooming up until on Saturday when we can have upwards to 1,700 people working at one time on a site and that's happened. I can't tell people how important it is 
to get the people to turn out. Not only that, it's the people who don't turn out really miss the fun. <laughs> you get the wide lines out. Hey, thanks, John. When I volunteered to be the food coordinator, I didn't, I realized it was not going to be, I did not realize it was going to be the job that it was. I figured it was going to be a one-day splash. When I heard that I was going to have to feed 300 people a day for five days straight, I almost panicked. And all summer long, all I've done is honk on the phone and beg. Most companies have been fabulous. I got 900 bags of popcorn from Smart Stuff. Um, a lot of the liquor stores donated cases of soda. The parents have been marvelous. They've brought down casseroles, they've brought down fruit. I've had to organize to have people bring down like desserts over the five day period. It all started in probably February. We started calling for the big tools, the boom augers, Mass Electric donated one, New England Telephone donated one. We had to get uh, backhoes. Those were very, very early items. In August, we started with the small tools. We got, uh, we've on hand, we have like 30 skill saws, just gobs and gobs and gobs of tools, and it took an immense amount of time on the telephone is what it took, and uh, we've managed to put them all together. We have uh, two very distinct levels of skill here. We have those that are professionals and that those that are never even saw a saw on TV. So um, it's hard to judge how much we can accomplish just with the very few skills that we have. So I'm very non-committal on saying how we're going to do, but we're doing okay. Right? We're just hanging in there right now. A lot of work left. Site, the site has been a nightmare and our biggest nemesis. In other words, every time we do something, we have to unearth all this rubble that's been backfilled. So that causes, you know, it's a real time fact. It causes us a lot of work. I got into this, I have two small children, but I'm also a pediatric nurse, and I take care of a lot of um, children who have injuries with, play with playground equipment. I work on an orthopedic floor at Children's Hospital, and I don't think people realize that the 1950s type playgrounds that we grew up with are very unsafe, and we get a lot of kids, at least a couple of um, kids a week, who hang out in traction for weeks because of injuries that they sustain. And these are healthy kids, and they're kids that really should not have accidents, the accidents that can be avoided. Even though this does not guarantee that we won't have injuries, it's a responsible type of playground, and I think you will see fewer injuries. Attention everyone! For anyone who has a child in the children's area, they are now being served lunch. They can be, remain there till 12.15, finishing their lunch, at which time they should be picked up and returned home. Everybody stops. The shops are working. working right now. You listen real good. You can almost hear the kids laughing already. I cannot believe how many people have turned out. With all the construction companies who have been here, we wouldn't be where we are now if they hadn't come out. And the people honestly enjoyed what they did. They loved it and they came back. And they said that they loved it and they said they were going to come back. I own a toy store. So it's right up my alley doing things for kids. Most days I just push a pencil. I am a vice president of sales and marketing for an electronics company. I no red bike for tennis. I'm an architect. I'm taking my kids to the parks. So now this will be an exciting adventure because we'll have a better park to come to. I am a dentist in Boston. I own a uh, curtain and drapery shop in Salem. Just seeing the people pour in on the street. I mean, there are car, cars after cars after cars coming in, and construction crew after construction crew coming in, taking all their tools and getting out and just loving it, and being not paid, just doing it on their own. For me, it was my dream and my idea, and the fact that I didn't have to bust my butt to have it happen, that, that other people, and there's not very much I do in life that I don't do myself, and to have all these people working together to do it has just been incredible for me. I've lived here for 10 years and uh, most of the time that I've lived here uh, the town has experienced uh, one setback after another, mostly uh, financial things related to Prop 2.5, cutbacks and this and that service. 
uh, school problems. And this is the first development I can remember that uh, is entirely positive and has uplifted the town's morale and brought all the people together rather than split them apart. It's, uh, it's the best thing that I can remember in the last 10 years and, and one of the only really good things that's happened to Swanscape. It's going to be a, uh, a push to the end. Still got a lot of work. It'll, be, it'll push to the end for about six, I think it's six or seven o'clock tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 